In 2017, discussions began between the Falkland Islands government and the Ministry of Defence as to what can be done to address the ongoing issues of rotor winds at Mount Pleasant Airport. In 2021, an agreement was made between FIG and the MOD to begin a project into the weather experienced at MPA. This was one that both parties hoped would help to mitigate the effect of rotors on air travel and improve predictability. Seven years on and £800,000 worth of Falklands government investment later, the LiDAR system is now up and running. LiDAR is a light and detection and ranging uh, it's an observational device that is used by the Met Office to take a picture of the atmosphere above the airfield in Mount Pleasant uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is the uh, LiDAR PC that we have in Mount Pleasant Complex Met Office. So what we've got here is we have the, the LiDAR is in the centre here and then the um, wind at the moment is coming from north so we've got a differentiation between the wind direction showing on the LiDAR at, nine, at uh, 90 degrees to the wind direction. So the wind flowing towards the LiDAR would normally be blue and green and then the wind going away from the LiDAR would be red, orange and yellow. And as you can see from this picture we've got areas it to the northwest of the airfield where instead of the wind blowing, a northerly wind coming towards the LiDAR, it's actually reverse flowing and then it's coming back on itself which indicates that there are going to be rotors in that area of the airfield. Rotor winds are not unique to the Falkland Islands. Other countries, like Gibraltar, are also affected by them. However, the reason we feel the effects of rotors so often is due to the location and landscape surrounding Mount Pleasant Complex. A rotor event is when the wind coming fr uh, from a northerly direction flows over the top of the Wickham Heights with an inversion layer above the Wickham Heights squeezes the air and then the air flows down the side of the Wickham Heights and then it, in some parts it's high pressure and in some parts it's low pressure and what will happen is the air in the high pressure area will try to move towards a low pressure area and that causes and then that will cause the um, circulation of the air on a horizontal plane and then you get the rotor events. Over 300 flights arrive and depart from MPA annually, and to date there have been no fatal incidents caused by rotor winds. The MOD have a strict no risks policy with flying, as any damage that the runway may receive at MPA could cause logistical challenges due to being located on a remote island. It's a, it's a blanket rule that covers everything. It makes total sense, I think, well, almost total sense with regard to the air bridge. Uh, because that's uh, long legs, very expensive. Where does the aircraft go uh, if it doesn't get into the forecomes? Um, but the it's a a big Airbus is a very different machine to the Islander. Rotor winds, they they're not as common. They're not they're not they're nowhere near as common as the forecast. Put it that way. Um, if you get a, a strong rotor cloud, undoubtedly, yeah, they 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 can be unpleasant. Um, I've flown in and around a few of them, um, but they the uh, they're not that they're not that common to be that extreme. Quite often, personally, I don't think there's sufficient wind to to generate such reaction um, on a large percentage of the cases. Um, uh, especially given that sometimes you can get a 30 knot, 35 knot northerly and the rotors aren't put in, uh, even though you're talking about a still turbulent wind that's coming over the ridge um, and it's towards the edge of what the aircraft can, can handle. Um, uh, so there's, you sometimes wonder why that's interpreted the way it is. Uh, um, but that's, uh, yeah. There's, there's all sorts of little bits and apps like Windy, you can see what the wind is once you get a little bit above the surface, uh, what the 2,000, 3,000 foot wind is. And sometimes that does not suggest that rotors should even be considered. Um, uh, obviously, the, the Met Office is different, different information, I think.
flights are typically delayed when a rotor wind is forecasted by the Met Office. The airfield is closed from an hour either side of the forecasted time period when the rotor winds are predicted to allow for planning and rescheduling. Occasionally this can also lead to cancellations. Perceptions are within the community that the uncertainty and unpredictability of flights due to rotor winds has potentially had a significant impact on various industries, the economy and social well-being of the Falkland Islands. So if we talk about this season, let's just go until the end of February because we're only halfway through March. So if we think of the beginning of October to the end of February, 7 out of 21 flights have been um, impacted by delays due to rotors. And what that has meant for us as FIH is that 49% of our clients have been impacted either inbound or outbound by these delays. So that you can see from those figures alone that that's really significant. That's not taking into account anyone else that's travelling on LATAM, that's just our clients. The travelling community is quite small and they definitely all engage with each other. Um, and, you know, rather unfortunately, we have already had a large photography group who were booked to visit in January 2025. The group trip was fully sold out, but the tour operator is so concerned about the potential of delays and the impacts that those are going to have, having experienced them already this season. He has taken the um, difficult decision to cancel the trip entirely. Now, this tour operator alone has brought over a million pounds of income into the Falklands economy as he's operated. So for someone like that to have to take that decision, you know, this is really significant. So yeah, very sadly, people are taking the um, decision not to come. And that is naturally going to impact our forecasted numbers going forward. We are about to start approaching all those clients that have booked for the next season. So October 24 to March 25. And so, you know, I'm actually expecting people to turn around and say, thank you, but no thank you, because, you know, we've seen what's been going on. And actually, there are other places in the world that we know we can visit. There are backup aircraft and crews, etc. There aren't issues of um, airfield um, impact. So, yeah, they're going to go somewhere else. And that's really sad. The MOD and Met Office predicts that it will take three to five years to get any results from the data gathered by the LiDAR system. It is not expected to resolve all the issues caused by the road winds. However, the Met intend to use this data to advance their understanding of the conditions that cause rotor winds and how airfield response procedures are handled in the future.